Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create the basics of a scene something like this. So really, this is all about particles. This is a cycles render, and I've used Blender 2.8, but most of what I'm going to go through is applicable to earlier versions of Blender as well. So you can see I've got a number of different flowers and plants in here, but the most common particle in this scene is the grass, and we'll also be modeling some of that as well. So to begin with, we need to model our particle objects. So I'm not going to cover quite as many as I had in that scene, but to begin with, let's start with the grass, as that's the main element of the scene. So I'm going to start with the plane, rotate on the X, that's R, X, scale on the X, just to make it narrow. Go into edit mode, control R, and just put an extra couple of vertices at either end like that. And then control R again, and we're just using the mouse wheel just to add a few more points in there. Now there is going to be a lot of geometry in this scene, but nevertheless try to keep the amount of geometry lower if you can, unless you're going for a low poly type scene, because we are going to put a lot of copies of each of these blades of grass in the scene. So I'm going to select the top of my blade of grass now. Of course it's left click because I'm in Blender 2.8. And I'm going to scale that in and then pull those down just to make the end of the grass a little pointed. Perhaps scale those out slightly and then scale on the X the whole thing a little bit. And then I'm going to select that center set there. If you look down in this corner you can see how I'm doing that. And then G, Y and just move that slightly just to give us some depth to the blade of grass. What I should have done is just added some more vertices just there for what I'm going to do next. And that'll mean I can just move this end without anything strange going on. I'm just going to move those flat, basically flatten the edge of the blade of grass off slightly there. Control plus and I've got that whole end selected. So I'm looking side on. Press O to add proportional editing and I'm going to set that to sharp and then rotate. If I come out slightly, you can see you can use the windy wheel to set how much of the grass blade is affected. And I want to affect everything except for the bottom really. And right click and just say shade smooth. And for the time being, we'll give this a simple material. Obviously we'll call it grass. We'll set it to a greenish color in the viewport as well. So we'll come back to the grass material in a little bit. I am going to press U and say unwrap. You may get a message down here about it being non-uniform. If you get that, out of edit mode, press Control A and say apply scale. And then press U and unwrap and that should be fine. It doesn't matter too much anyway. So you can see what I meant about fairly crude geometry. So I might want to add a little bit more geometry there, G, Z, just to smooth that out a bit. Control R to add a loop of vertices. Next. We can see the origin of this blade of grass is right there. With everything selected, I'm just going to move in edit mode the blade of grass up there and look from the side. I want it just slightly inside the blade of grass and that's a good starting point. And again, I think it's a little bit angular, so control R to add some more vertices there. And that just smooths it out. We're not going to see these blades of grass in an awful lot of detail in the scene I'm going to create. But nevertheless, it quickly becomes pretty obvious when you have reflections and things like that if it's too angular. So there's our basic grass blade. I'm now going to duplicate it, rotate it on the z-axis, that's R, Z, 72 degrees. We'll look from above, just move that around a little bit. Rotate Shift D, rotate Z, 72. And we'll do more to these in a moment. Shift D and then I'm pressing Escape. Rotate Z72 and duplicate that one and rotate that 72 degrees. So we've got a basic plant there, but obviously it doesn't look very much like grass at the moment. So I'll start to move these blades out. And the good thing about having the origin point down the bottom there, it makes that very easy. Obviously we don't want them all at the same angle or all exactly the same height. So I'm just scaling them a little bit as well. Bring that one in a little bit. That one will make that one a slightly taller one for this particular plant. And then what we want to do is actually change some of the form of some of the blades of grass. So obviously some of them will be more straight than others. 
And what you can do is change to different options in the proportional editing, just so that you can do some different effects. Really just so that the blades of grass aren't all identical. And they don't need to come from exactly the same spot either. As long as they're nearby, then they'll simulate a plant. So once you've done that, we can join them all together. Control J will join them together. And obviously, that's a good starting point. We haven't put any real texture on there yet. But we also need multiple plants. So I'm going to duplicate that one. I'm just going to make three plants. I think that was sort of roughly the number that I did. But the more you do, the more variation you're going to get. Now, they will have random sizes and random rotations, but if they're all the same, then it will soon show up. The more you have, the more natural it will look. And obviously, once you group them, you may have some challenges with the proportional editing, but you can ungroup them again if you need to. And you don't actually have to group them to copy them either, of course. It's really just a matter of changing the form a little bit so that you have a different plant. Control L will select the whole leaf. So that's good enough for this demonstration. So we have three grass plants here. And I should have named the first one before I got into that, of course. So we'll call this grass one, grass two, and grass three. We'll say move to a new collection. And we'll call this grass. So I'm just going to move them off to the side and then I'm going to add another plane and we'll scale this up quite a lot. You can work in real scales if you want to and that can make things easier when you want to add particularly man-made things in there because we have a good idea of what size those things should be. I'm going to go into edit mode, right click and say subdivide. We get a menu down here and I'll just increase the number of cuts a little and then I'll increase the fractal which will start to give us some variation in our meadow which I think makes it look a lot nicer, perhaps a little more. And then I'm going to come out of edit mode and press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface on there, which smooths it off. Right click and say shade smooth. So that's our basic meadow. If I make our camera visible, I like to make the camera appear to be a lot larger and then it's easier to find in the scene. And perhaps we'll put the camera somewhere over here. So I press zero to see what the camera is seeing. And one of the things to remember with your camera is by default, it will have quite a narrow clipping plane. So it's 100 meters. If I bring that in, you can see my landscape starts to disappear. So you need to take it out until you can see all of your landscape. I might make this landscape even a little bigger. And I'm pressing G and then using the middle mouse button just to drag my camera back a little. And we can, of course, play with the F number on the camera as well. So I'm just going to move these Again, out slightly. We'll make them a little bigger just to make them easy to find. Currently, at least, pretty much the same as with earlier versions of Blender. For these particles, in order to make them stand up correctly, I need to rotate Y90. If I don't do that, they'll be lying on their side. So back to here. Let's give this a basic material. But before I do, Control A and apply the scale. And then go into edit mode. Make sure all the vertices are selected and press U and unwrap, purely because we may want to put a little texture on there, which is what I did with my other one. Come to materials and say new, and we'll just give this a sort of mid brownish sort of material for the time being. We'll call that ground. And to make it easier, I'm also going to add another material, and I'm going to call that up from the pre-existing materials, and that's called grass. So it basically means I can just click the ground plane if I want to get to the grass material. I don't have to find these items here. And while we're at it, I'm going to say new material there. We'll call that poppy petal. Just make that red. So now we're going to particles and we'll click the plus here and we'll call this grass. And we'll call it grass again. We still seem to need to do that twice. We'll call it hair particles. We'll select advanced. We'll leave it at the default emission of one at the moment. You can see those little hair particles appeared on there now. We'll click rotation, but we'll say global Z. Plants tend to grow up, so we, we just want to use the global Z axis, but then maybe just put a tiny little bit 
of randomization on that. And we'll go for 0.15. We'll put the phase up to maximum and we'll randomize the phase to the tune of one. So the phase really is the rotation around the z-axis. So source will we'll stick with faces, but we'll change it to random. And I untick even distribution. We don't want things to look too perfect. Velocity normal, I set to zero. So this is essentially the size, but I set the object aligned velocity to one, one meter per second. So you can see it came back again, but now it's very vertical. But I put a small amount of randomize on there, 0 0.08. And that's just, you, you may just be able to, if I put that back to zero, you can see it just gives you a slight randomness. The plants are still growing upwards, but some of them have been offset slightly. We don't need to change anything under physics. Under render, we change that to collection. And then the collection instance is the grass collection. And you can see there's all our grass particles appeared. If it's difficult to see exactly what's going on because everything is selected, we can unclick this here. And although everything is selected, it doesn't highlight it all. So you can see our grass particles there. They're possibly a little bit too variable in their vertical alignment at the moment. So we can come back to rotation and we can go for 0.05. See that's slightly more vertical or even 0.025. These are basic grass particles. At the moment, they're all pretty much the same size. We need to select pick random, use the object's rotation and the object scale. And under render, we need the scale in this case to be a little larger. We look through our camera, that's possibly too large. So in my case, and obviously it depends on position of your camera and everything else, we want to go for something perhaps around this size, but then we want some random scale on it. And you'll notice they don't get any bigger, but there's some of them do get smaller. But that still looks pretty sparse at the moment, of course. So now we come down to children and we want interpolated. Interpolated will take two existing particles and then create more particles between them that are interpolated between one and the other. So if one's very tall and one's very small, it will, for example, create one child between them that's somewhere between the two. So probably don't want quite that many. I'm gonna set this to 25 for the render amount and we'll say 25 for the viewport as well. And you can see now what I mean about wanting to have a lot of particles. But the other thing is that the rotation of the particles is interpolated as well, so that the children aren't very, very different from the parent. And that tends to give you these effects of very similar blades of grass. They're all the same rotations and so on. And you can combat that by having more main blades of grass. So let's put this down to 10, for example. But up here, let's put 5,000. So that's 5,000 original blades. It's not perfect. I only created three grass plants and they were still fairly similar. But nevertheless, you can see it's not quite as bad. And we can play with the seed as well to see what that gets us. We don't need all those segments, by the way. I ended up using about 6,000, but let's go for 8,000 and that will help again. Now you can see it's more clumpy, but there's less of an issue of identical plants. It's, there's still an issue there because I've only created three plants and they're also quite large. There's a few more things we're going to do yet, though. Let's just make them a little smaller. Now, if your machine's struggling a lot with this, what you can do is, if you're fairly sure of where you want the camera pointing, you can just go into edit mode and define this area, the one that the camera's looking at, as a vertex group. And then use that vertex group in here, under vertex groups, as the one that you want to use to render these particles. And then all of the particles you're creating will all be concentrated here. And you may not need as many particles, which will reduce the lag and things like that. I didn't have too much of a problem. So that's the basics for the grass at the moment. So let's just add a sun lamp in. Meanwhile, we'll just turn off the visibility of the grass for a moment. We will put our 3D cursor somewhere like here, and we need to turn the visibility of things back on. So we'll just add a lamp, which is a sun lamp, sunlight. We'll rotate it like that. I'll scale it to make it easier to see. Click in here and give it a slightly yellow color. And we'll give it a strength of three. See, that's, we'll even go for five, I think. And under angle, that's what used to be the size of the lamp. We'll go to 0 0.02, which is a fairly small angle, which means that we'll have fairly sharp shadows. It's a good idea to have it running across the scene like that. Now you notice my grass particles are showing up here, my original particles. So because I put them in their own collection, I can actually vanish them by just clicking that. Alternatively, if I don't want them in the scene at all, which is the case, I can just click this little tick here and they disappear but they don't disappear from my particle system. So if I click that back on, here they are. And I'll just turn off the visibility of 
the highlighting. Obviously it's a very simple texture at the moment, but that's a lot of grass. It's about 60,000 grass plants in fact. But what if we don't want all this out here rendering? Because there's really no need to render all this out here when I'm looking through the camera. Under this sort of little printer section, which I guess is for the rendering, you can see there's a render region. So if you click that, all of that stops rendering, which means what's in here renders a lot faster. It'll still render everything when you're not looking through the camera, but it makes it a lot quicker when you are. Generally, you don't need RGBA. That's for if you want transparent backgrounds. We'll just go for RGB, but we'll go for 16 for the color depth which helps avoid anti-aliasing issues up here. Under sampling, I'm just going to set the viewport to 15 and the render to 50 for the moment. So if we go to the background, we'll say use nodes, come over to here and we'll just say sky texture. And that changes the look of the scene quite a bit. So it just gives a graded bluish sort of material to the sky. So we come out of rendered mode and we will disappear our grass from the viewport for a while and then come over to here and we're going to create some poppies. I'm just going to do the poppies, I think. So we'll start with a simple plane. Go into edit mode, we'll right click and say subdivide. This time we don't want any fractal and we'll say three. We'll press U and just say project from view bound. So that's unwrapped that. I'm going to call up another window and we're going to change that window to the UV editor. It's just got that original picture in there at the moment. And I'm going to open up this poppy petal here. Come over here and we can see that's mapped fairly well. Now I am going to shrink this down to be within that petal completely. I haven't actually applied any material yet of course but I can do that now and we'll just select our poppy petal there. But I brought that up because it gives us a general idea of what the shape should be. I'm going to go to sharp there and I could do this with the mirror modifier but given such a simple shape, it's not really necessary. And obviously you can decide how much geometry you want to put into it. So I want to put some shape to this petal. So we'll make this smooth proportional editing. And don't forget to say shade smooth. If you want to have some of these flowers visible close to the camera, what I suggest is you create more than one model. So you create a relatively low poly model for the distance view, but the ones you're going to put close, you can spend a lot more time, you can use subsurf and all that sort of thing to give you a nice smooth end result. I'm actually going to add a subdivision surface on here at level one and then just apply it. And that's still quite a lot of vertices as you can see, probably way too many really. Just depends however on how many flowers and therefore petals you're going to have. And then I'll just add a little bit of randomness to vary this a little bit. Select the bottom there and drag that in. And then let's have a look how that's mapping. So I think what I'll do is unwrap it again. And now you can see roughly what we've got. So I obviously need to turn that over. And I'm going to call up another window. And we're going to change that to the shader editor. I'm going to add a texture, which is an image texture. And from here, I can just select the poppy petal and put that into there, into the base color. So now you can see how this is starting to work. And if I want that black bit to be more significant, I can shrink the overall map. And there's my basic poppy petal. There's still more to do to the material up here. It's a bit clumsy joining and splitting windows in Blender 2.8. There's no little widgets in the corner which make it easy. You have to get your pointer right in there, but there is a workaround you move your mouse pointer till where that happens, where you get these little arrows, then right click and you can say split or join. And if you say join, you get the usual arrow pointing on which direction you want to join. It's not as smooth as it was in Blender 2.7. Maybe it'll be improved by the time 2.8 comes out of beta, but it does work. So there's our basic petal. You notice the origin is up here. So we're going to edit mode and just move that up to somewhere around there and level with the bottom of the petal. Now, if this was a flower with an awful lot of petals, I might use an array at this point, but poppies seem to only have quite a small number. I think I made mine with four. So first of all, select the petal and let's just rotate it up. Perhaps change the shape again slightly. We'll go for sharp now and just move it in the top there a little bit. So I'm just really putting that origin 
roughly where I think the centre of the flower is going to be. Duplicate it, rotate the duplicate 180 degrees, select them both, Shift D to duplicate again and rotate Z90. Then what we need to do is just select each one, rotate YY and just basically twist it slightly. Rotate YY. By saying Y Y rather than just Y, you're making it rotate around its local axis, which is always the same. Whereas obviously the global axis varies depending on the angle and position of the petals. So that's probably a bit too much actually. And if I'd done this with an array, it would do all of them simultaneously, of course. We don't really want them poking through each other. We can of course modify them. I'm not going to worry too much about that for the tutorial. Obviously, we can just do that and get them all inside each other. So at this point, let's join all four of those petals together. Control J. So I'm now going to just make sure my flower is selected. Shift S and say cursor to select it. And then Shift A and add an icosphere. We'll add a few more vertices on it and then scale it in. So it just fills the center of the flower. We don't need all those vertices on the bottom. So taking them all away up to that point, X vertices. We'll turn off proportional editing for the moment. And then let's just make a nice straight stem. Quite long for a poppy. Control R and in edit mode. And add a good few, don't go too mad though, vertices so that we can bend the stem. And I found I particularly needed some extra rings of vertices up near the top. So let's give that a basic material copy stem, color that some kind of green and in the viewport and right click it and say shade smooth. We also need to change the color of this area because generally the pop is a, a very dark color here. So we'll add a new color, poppy stamen. We'll make it red, but very, very dark red, almost black. And then we'll assign that. You may need to play around with the scale and whatnot, obviously. So that's our basic poppy. Just need to join those petals with the stem. You can obviously put some leaves on this stem as well, just to make it a bit more convincing. And we'll control J just to join all of that. I also made some poppies that weren't open. And certainly you can try playing around if they're not going to be viewed close up, playing around with just the basic flower. So with proportional editing, we can, for example, just select the top set of vertices on the flower and then just scale that in. What you may find is you need to increase what you selected depending on how much of the flower you want to bring in and potentially of course I'll just turn off proportional editing there scale it down a little bit as well. So this is one that's just starting to open and I know they have this sort of green capsule around them so if you wanted to be completely accurate you'd want to do that as well but typically they are bent over when they are not yet open. So let's go for smooth shading and rotate that one. I'm just rotating in the view and you can see what I mean about needing extra vertices there. And then again, we just need to add some variation into our flower. So rather than a completely straight stem, we press Z and I must say I'm not a fan of these pie menus, but they are the default setting. We can select a few rings of vertices and then just add a little bit of variation to the stems. So they're not completely straight and obviously duplicate some and perhaps add some differences, rotate the flower a little. And the only other thing I did was I thought it would be good to have one that also was slightly over. So again, selecting the edges there, just moving them down basically and scaling them out slightly and then just rotating them a bit as if they're just curling out. Probably better off with a sharp proportional edit for this one. And maybe you don't even need the whole edge there. So that's given us three different versions of the main flower. And obviously we can do, do something different with the unopened flower as well. So if we select all those flowers and say Shift M and New Collection, we'll call this Poppies. And there they all are. I haven't named them in this case, but we'll vanish those now. So the one thing I forgot to do with my poppies is put the origin in the right place. So 
but select each one, select all the vertices, there's the origin, just put them just below the origin and that way they'll stick into the ground rather than float above it. So let's vanish those, look through our camera. So my scene was very much a poppy field, so I put a lot of poppies. So let's start by just copying the grass settings and that'll put a load of grass on the scene at the moment. Before you change anything, you notice you've got a two here. If I start changing this, this will change the grass settings for this as well. So click that little two, and now we can just call this poppies. Good to use a different seed to every other particle system, just so that things aren't coincident. Otherwise you get the same position being cluttered with particles if they are the same, certainly if they're the same number of particles. Again, I kept off even distribution and used random, so we inherited that from the grass settings. And then under render, we say collection, and the collection obviously is poppies. Now you can see they're all lying down at the moment, and that's because we haven't rotated them yet. So let's just turn them off for a second. Turn on our poppies here, there they are over there. Let's select each one, rotate on the Y 90 degrees. Let's turn them off again. Go back to our camera view, turn that, turn the overlays off and turn our poppy particles back on. There they are, it looks pretty impressive at the moment. That's a lot of poppies. You come into this mode, it won't look quite the same. And that's because we've got children on and I didn't use children for my poppies. It wasn't necessary, I didn't want that many. So I'm going to come down here and set that to none. But they're also very evenly distributed and you tend to find that plants occur in drifts so you'll get areas where there's a lot of flowers and then there'll be empty areas or areas where there's a different flower, that kind of thing. So in order to simulate that, what I did is I used textures. So come down to here, select one of the textures, normally the top one, and just say new. And I called this Poppy TX1. Click here and I used Veroni. I used an intensity of about 1.5 and you can see that brightens that up a little bit size of about 0.5 and this will depend on the size of your plane so it will vary a bit but it's a good starting point and now I set to 0.1 but I don't think it really makes much difference. I then came down to influence and time doesn't do anything for us in this case so we turn that off. Come on down to hair length and click that and immediately you can see something changed over here. Scroll on down and you can see mapping so I changed that to UV. Now it's starting to look a little different and just make sure it's using the UV map we created. And then come on down to colors. And if you want to, you can use a color ramp just to sharpen it up. So you can make some of them bigger and some of them smaller. Now, if we look through the camera, you can see we've got areas where there are a lot of poppies and areas where there are none. So if I select my camera and move it up and then rotate XX for the camera and then it'll rotate without tilting. And you can see we've got drifts of the poppies. I go into rendered view now. Obviously it's a very basic poppy material right now. And I turn my grass on as well. And again, very basic material for the grass. And you can see what we're starting to get now. Very much like a painting. And I've always liked 3D renders that sort of give you this impression of a painting rather than the purely photorealistic ones. But there's still some more we can do with this and it will be a little bit more photorealistic when we've done it. So let's turn those particles off and let's turn our grass and poppies back on. So I've stayed in rendered view this time. I'm going to move, put our overlays back on. I'm going to move the grass over to nearer the poppies so it's easier to swap between them. And bring another window up and change that window to shader editor. So I ended up building quite a complex node setup for the grass. And there are a variety of different approaches. I'm not completely satisfied with the principal shader for this. So I added quite a few other nodes around it. But let's make a start. So first of all, if you remember we unwrapped it. So I can just simply add a texture, which is an image texture. And I have some textures which I use for this sort of thing. And I use this one here called grass texture. It's literally part of a blade of grass. And I like the fact it's got some variation in the shading. So we'll open that up and we'll just connect that in initially to the color of the principal shader. And you can see we've got some variation there. But obviously on its own, that's not enough. So I also wanted some variation in that color. So what I did was I added a gamma node, take a copy of the color out of there, the texture out of there into the gamma node, set the gamma node to about 0.5. So this sort of makes you a lighter version of the texture. 
I just take that straight in, you can see it's much lighter, slightly more yellowy. And then I added a hue saturation node. I'll pump that in as well. I turn the saturation down slightly to 0.9, and then I'm gonna add color mix node and drop that there. So all of that comes from one side, and then on the other side, I put the raw texture, and that feeds into the principal shader. Then add a texture coordinate, and then we add noise texture, set that to about 0.5, the actual level will vary depending on your size of your model. Take the generated out of the texture coordinate and put that into the noise texture. And then add a color ramp. Take the factor out of the noise and put that into the color ramp. Bring the points roughly into the middle somewhere, just to sharpen the contrast. And set that to cardinal. And I use that to control the mix. And all that does is just give me a little bit of variation across the surface of the grass. It doesn't massively change it, it just gives it a slight variation between one grass plant and another. And the idea is that not every grass blade will be exactly the same. Just because I wanted to darken it a little bit, I added another gamma node and have that set to 1.5, and then another one. And the reason for this one, also set to 1.5, and then I added a translucent shader. It is possible to get this with the principled shader, but I've never been particularly satisfied with the result. So take the color output from the gamma node into there. The idea is that the color from light going through an object should be more intense as well as darker than light bouncing off it. Strictly the next node should be an add shader, but I've always found it better to use a mix node and that gives you a little bit of extra control then as well. So I'm going to add the mix shader here, a mix shader, not a color mix node. Put the translucent into one side, the principled output into the other, and then the output goes into the material surface input. And I had the output set to about 0.625. So that's mostly the principled shader and a little bit of translucence. If we look on the other side, you can see we're getting some light coming through there, especially where it's a lighter color. So then over to roughness. Now again, in theory, principled shader does all of this for you, but again, I'm not completely happy with it. If I come to here, you can see there's a reflection. But as I turn roughness up, that reflection disappears. So I experimented with this. I just added an input, which is a layer weight input. It's already unwrapped, so I don't need to put anything into there. I put the facing output into the roughness input and I set the blend to about 0.75. So the idea being that the angle will vary the apparent roughness. Theoretically, you don't need to do that. But again, it just adds a little bit more variation into the surface of the grass. Now, something I didn't do, but it's probably worth doing. I'm also going to add another noise node. I think we'll do it with bumps. So we'll bring that down here. I'm going to add a vector node, which is a bump node. Take the factor output of the noise into the height and then take that out into the normal input on there. Now I need to turn the scale up quite a bit and the detail up, but the strength needs to come down a long way. Even 0.1 is possibly a little high. Go for 0.025, maybe 0.035. It's just to give a little bit of surface variation uh, maybe we'll go to 0.05 now. So it's just to give you something happening on the surface rather than being completely flat, coming down now on the scale, going up on the strength. So I've ended up with, for this particular model, scale of 30, detail of 16, strength of 0.075 and everything else at default, and that goes into the normal. And in theory, you should also take that into the normal input of the translucent, although I don't think it'll make a huge amount of difference to that. Alternatively, you could just put your noise into the displacement, but you'll need to scale it down in terms of the intensity, but this works quite well. So that's the texture for the grass. Let's have a look at how that's working. So we select our ground plane and just re-enable the grass. We're in render mode at the moment, and you can see that looks a bit better. We've got areas where it picks up the light. Could still do with some tweaking, I think. Perhaps needs slightly more reflection. And that's why it's handy to have put the material onto the ground as well. Even though it's not applied to anywhere on the ground, it makes it easy to go back to it. So I can reduce the gamma, for example, on the overall grass just to lighten it up. And I can adjust the blend here to make it slightly more reflective. 
And obviously you can also put multiple particle systems and have some more variation in the color. So I could perhaps go up in the saturation, which makes it more yellowy in certain places. I've gone for two on the noise frequency there and that's added a little bit more variation to it. So that's my basic grass. And let's go for our poppy petal now. I'll turn the grass particles off and the poppy particles on. So quite similar to the grass, added a few more nodes. So I'm first gonna add a color ramp and take a version of the texture into that. I'm actually gonna swap these points over. I'm gonna have point zero at point zero seven seven. That's what I used before anyway. And the other point at point one. So they're quite close together. And I use B spline, which is sort of smooths it out a little bit, despite the fact that they are very close together. So if we look at what that's doing, that's given us a sort of black and white texture. And it's really just narrowing in on certain areas. I'm going to add a bump node. I'm going to take that color from that color ramp into the height, set the strength to about 0.25, and then put the bump into the normal. You can see that's giving us sort of looks like noise, but it's actually the texture from the petal image and put our image back into the base color. We're now going to add gamma node. You can probably guess what I'm going to do now because at the moment these petals are opaque. There is no light coming through them. Take the color from the texture into that gamma node. I'm going to add shader which is a translucent shader. Set the gamma node to about 1.5. So that's a darker version of the texture. Add another shader which is a mixed shader and mix the principled output with the translucent output and then take that into the surface. So now you can see we've got light coming through our petals as well as bouncing off them. In this case, roughness, I left at about 0.5. I think I put it down to maybe 0.4, slightly lower. And strictly, you should take the bump into the normal of the translucent as well. And we should do something similar with the stems, obviously. But if I now bring up the grass, you can see we've got the beginnings of our poppy field. So I'll just come out of rendered view and we'll give this a little render. So there it is so far. Obviously this is done a little more crudely than I did the original image and I haven't put a background yet. I'll do that in a moment. But you can see this starts to give you quite a good effect. I really like the painterly look. I quite like this particular setup actually. This has worked quite well. Obviously the texture for the poppies needs a little more work. We need to adjust it slightly. We need some more models for the poppies. So just having the few that I've got the flowers are a little samey but they really do give you this nice idea of these swathes of flowers they, using the texture really adds to it so a couple more things that we need to do by the way it's f12 to cause it to render or you can just go up to the top menu and render there if you don't want it rendering in a separate window like that which has its advantages and disadvantages and render display mode just click image editor and you can see that will then render into this window rather than a new window, which can be more convenient. So let's just add a background now. Let's remove the render panel view of the particles, just hiding the poppies there. I'm now gonna add an image, which is images as planes. So I'll select emit so that it emits a little bit of light, has no shadows. And I've got some textures that I use here, and this is quite a nice one. It's quite small, so I'll just scale it up. I've just turned on overlays there. Now we need to make it the same angle as our camera. If you want to be able to move the camera around quite a lot, it's worth parenting it with the camera. Control P and just say parent to object. Now when I move the camera around, the background will move with it. So you notice the background's disappeared there as I look through the camera, and that will be the clipping plane. So if I increase that now, you can see there it is. So the angle of that plane isn't quite right, I think. i just make it a little bigger. I want it as near to the ground in that plane as I can get it, because then I've got the clouds really looking as though they're moving away into the distance. And because this is emitting light, it will affect the scene slightly, which is a good thing. So if we go to rendered view now, and then turn our particles back on, I'll turn off the overlay. You can see that's starting to look quite nice now. So I'll give this a render and then I'll talk about a few other little minor things. If you find you were perhaps making an animation or something like that and you need to render a lot of these, this is rendering quite quickly actually, but you might need to reduce the number of samples. So currently I'm rendering at 50 samples or the viewport render is only 15 samples. It is a little bit noisy. Well, we can of course turn on denoising so we can click this one here. So I'll do that. But the other thing I'll do is come up to here, go to light paths, and we'll put direct lighting clamping up to seven and indirect seven as well, which should help reduce it and also turn off 
reflective and refractive caustics because we don't have any in the scene and having them on certainly in earlier versions of blenders made the scenes more noisy and it's likely it does in blender 2.8 as well so let's go to the non-rendered version and then i'll render it and we can render by either clicking up here say render image or as you can see we can just press f12 so there it is there's a little bit of enhancement we can do to that yet so first of all let's have a look at the color management side so it should be defaulting to filmic but we can use some presets over here so we said very high contrast you can see that's really dark and bright and probably not quite right or we can say low contrast and that's quite washed out I use medium high contrast for mine but we can also then play with the gamma setting brighten and dim it and obviously the overall exposure to make it a brighter or less bright image once we've got that to approximately where we want it we can open up a new window and change that one to the compositor click use nodes and there is our basic scene and the compositor output and what you often want to do because it simulates what cameras do you want to, I think I'm just going to darken that a little bit, it's a little bit over the top. You want to add a mask to it, you want to add a vignette essentially. So that's fairly easily done. So we'll go to nodes, we'll add a matte, which is an ellipse mask. And initially just drop it in there like that. And your scene goes black and white and you can see this ellipse in the center. X it normally go to 1 and Y normally to 0.5. Let's put our image back now. We don't need the image going into the ellipse mask. I'm now going to add a filter, which is a blur filter. Take my ellipse mask into that. Set this to fast Gaussian. Set it to relative so that it understands that the scene is wider than it is tall. We'll say Y correction. And I usually use something about 15% for both X and Y. So it's blurring the mask. Then added color mix node. Set that to multiply. Put my image into one side and my mask into the other. Make it a bit clearer by putting this up here and then take the output into my composite output. There is our vignette. It's very dark at the moment, but you can back it off. I went to about 0.7, maybe slightly more than that, 0.75. So the corners are just slightly darkened and it just adds a little more interest. And you can even reduce the size of your mask, of course. So we could make this perhaps a width of 0.9 and a height of 0.4. So that's darkening more. It's a subtle effect if you use it that way, but it just adds a little bit of variation. I then added a few more nodes. So I'm going to add color, which is a color balance node. Drop that in there. Should be set to lift gamma gain. And for, certainly for a scene like this, I'm going to go to slightly yellow for lift, slightly blue for gamma, and again, slightly yellow for gain. It's a subtle effect. You can certainly play around with it. I then added color which is a hue saturation node and I actually desaturated slightly so let's try 0.975 it was a bit over the top and finally although I can adjust it here as well I added a gamma node on my original case I actually darkened it slightly but you can actually go slightly brighter as well for this image Perhaps that's too much and I think for this image I'm going to change what I'm doing slightly perhaps add a bit more green and obviously you can change the overall color temperature of the image depending on what you're trying to achieve. But that's basically it. Obviously I added more flowers and when you add more flowers make sure you use a different texture. The text that I created to specify where the flowers were. So that's this one here. I select the right particle system. So make sure you create a different texture for each set of flowers with slight variations in the parameters for them. So it could still be Veroni but have it slightly different size, that kind of thing, or just use a completely different pattern. And that will then give you areas where you might have a lot of poppies, but in another area you might have a lot of cornflowers and that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, let me know. If you enjoy these tutorials, don't forget to click like and subscribe. I also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account, and I now have a Patreon page as well. And I'll provide links to all of those in the description below. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot.